Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about the uh, final chapter of Time Paradox Ghost Rider with my co-star, The Birds. Uh, hey, uh, so we're just coming in because, well, this was a series that I was covering a little bit on the channel and it was unfortunate to see it ending. It was, it's been quite the saga over on Viz and it's always very funny to uh, read the comments and how many people were just so invested in this. But anyway, yeah, this is the final chapter of Time Paradox Ghost Rider. Just gonna very quickly talk about it um, and just give my general thoughts for it because people were asking. Now, uh, the big thing that I want to just like put out there is that because this is a rushed ending, it is a rushed ending. I don't. Th you could argue that it's not, but it. I think there's enough factors to say it is a rushed ending. For instance, like missing details, like the square root of 144. Um, point is, I think it's a rushed ending. Um, I think it's because it was a cancellation. And unfortunately, because of that, uh, it kind of changes how we have to look at the chapter. For instance, I can't, I can't compare this chapter to a series that ended on its own terms. It's just not fair to do that. Uh, but there is something really impressive in that this chapter, in certain parts, feels like it's a natural conclusion. So some people are feeling this was planned. Um, and that in of itself is really a mark for quality. There are some really notoriously bad uh, cancellation endings. In this case, this one was smooth enough uh, because the little details that were brought up earlier were so little that they were easy to forget, um, which might be a plus for the team that came up with Time Paradox Ghost Rider. Also to speak on why Ter Time Paradox Ghost Rider might have gone down, right now, you know, there's just like baseless rumors, but it's pretty much an issue of it seems like the Japanese audience, which is the main target market, did not like the plagiarism aspect of the first three chapters, or roughly something like that. So knowing that that was a common criticism, I've also heard murmurs that uh, it had pretty bad reviews on Amazon. So that's just telling us like a general idea of what people were feeling about Time Paradox Ghost Rider. At the end of the day, it's conjecture. All we do know for sure is that this thing was at the bottom of the magazine, which is indicative of Shonen Jump going to cancel this series. Uh, so let's get into that and let's talk about the ending. I'll, I'll be going through page by page and we'll be talking about it in that regard. So for Time Paradox Ghost Rider, the first four pages are pretty useless. Uh, the reason that they're useless is because they're just kind of um, establishing shots. I should, I should put this down so I know when the birds are talking. Um, yeah, the first four pages are establishing shots. There is nothing of value in those four first pages, um, unfortunately. Um, at the fifth page, we have this whole conversation with Aino, which really just starts to serve as a characterization. So page four, uh, sorry, page five to about seven, it's just uh, showing where Aino is in her perspective. She's very cold. Um, it's interesting that she just shoves away um, Tepe. This just does paint again that she is very antisocial, that d she has some deep, she has, she has some deep problems. Um, she has some deep antisocial tendencies. Uh, we move over and we go into page eight and page eight till about, well, that kind of carries the rest of the chapter is just Aino experiencing her revelation. And honestly, really pretty images of Aino. I think the uh, the art really showed a level of uh, vulnerability, especially that one panel of her running. I liked how they, how they drew her running position. It just looked so vulnerable. I think that was a really good shot. So like really for the art, 100% really amazing, really beautiful. I think it conveyed a lot of different emotions here. Um, so we go through with Aino. Um, she's read Tepe's manga, the manga that he produced in the stopped time world. And she is extremely, she's inspired by it. Now, here's where the problem begins for me. And this is just like a very small gripe, is that what she was saying, it's essentially what readers knew we were going to get if we were getting the happy ending, right? She's just, she's confirming information, but like pretty much hearing her like even say that she was consumed by her vision and that she kind of forgot what she was doing. We already knew that. We already knew that she forgot. Tepe also kind of had a sense of that. And then you have her just saying like, oh yeah, but you know, I, reading that manga just reminded me how much I love drawing. And you know, the, the, the real thing here, the, the, the part that's really hard for to tell to me is how monumental of a reaction she got from reading that manga. And of course, the worst thing about this series, 
when it comes to a manga creation series is that they don't show you the manga that they're creating. Um, and you can defend it as much as you want and say like, oh, no, no, it's got little points where it showed you some little things here. But Bakuman sent, it's another manga that did this and it set a better example. As long as that manga exists as an example within Shonen Jump of how to do a manga creation series, all the other series can be and will be compared to it. Um, especially when they're being done by people who are within the industry. Um, now, what we ultimately get is a black box. We don't know what the manga did aside from a few little details, which we'll talk about in a second. But it is nice to know that it was so good that it made her remember that it's fun to draw. Again, it, it's hard because that manga is supposed to be so world changing. Because it's supposed to be so world changing, it justifies that she can have an, an uh, Aino can have an incredible reaction to it. But it is hard as a reader to just accept that. And this is where I'm going to uh, give the series a break because this is also the issue of it ending so quickly. Had we had a more nuanced approach here, which I think we would have gotten had it not been rushed, uh, this buildup would have been better. So with Aino's epiphany, you know, on one hand, it feels kind of shallow because this epiphany is what we expected for her. And because it feels so shallow, it makes her seem like a little bit, a little bit sillier than she should be. But again, that, I think that's an effect of it being rushed. And I shouldn't hold that against the authors because they're doing the best that they can with a bad situation. Um, there's no way around it. You look at this series and it's like, it could have done with more than 14 chapters. But yeah, up to page 15, you know, it's the art is really what carries it for me. But what I know is telling me, it's it's not all that it's not all that interesting. It's not new information. It just this feels like something that we already knew, and it's just unfortunate we're just getting her confirm it. Now I will say, um, the part that was just kind of interesting was also that she just flat out was going to give up when she. Uh, I think on page twelve she just said, oh, "I've always wanted to draw a manga like that, but I give up. I'm not trying anymore." Again, the brevity with which she says that is the most incredible thing here. That she just goes flat out like, "Yeah, I'm done. I'm done." It just kind of again highlights that I know had. Um, a lot of negative personality traits that she hasn't really worked through. Um, we know from the first timeline that she's the kind of person that only got inspired by Tepe after reading his one shot to go and turn in all the manuscripts she worked on um, for 10 years or whatnot. So when you consider that kind of trait, all that Tepe really did for her was instigator and he didn't really get past that or she, yeah, she didn't gain like any of the kind of trials and tribulations that maybe she, well, actually, no, it's just an issue of like the, the underlying problem wasn't fixed. Um, so she still has a very wishy-washy personality. Well, I shouldn't even call it wishy-washy. It's just pretty much she's like, she goes zero to a hundred. There's no in-between. Actually, that's actually a really good metaphor for Aino. It's zero or a hundred. Like, there's no in-between. That's a very unstable person. Um, so thank God she's stable by the end of the story. Um, and then we'll move into, uh, what they did to tie up the, uh, the rhetoric. So this starts around page 16, where Tepe touches on the fact that, hey, you know, we're two of a kind. Isn't it kind of cool that this story can connect two people who are two of a kind? So this was really good because this is another bookend. So I appreciate that. The birds are really enjoying this. Um, I appreciate that they connected those ideas together. We know that I know when she first met Tepe said, hey, we're like almost the same person. Um, so it was cool to have that connection here. Now, this is where I think like this chapter really gets good. because, And it's really unfortunate that it's at page 16 that I really enjoy the chapter. But um, what I think is the most impressive thing is that Tepe was was able to shon, shonenify the idea of eating right and getting proper sleep. Can you think about how hardcore you got to be to make that the moral of a story? You got Naruto over there talking about the problems of revenge and the problems with war. But then you got Tepe's story just like, yo, eat right, get sleep, be a well-adjusted person. I mean, and, and think about how bad I know is that she needs to be told this through manga. Um... I know is definitely a very special young lady, but that's what, uh, that's probably just a trade off. It's probably an issue like she traded off well adjustment in order to be a genius mangaka. That's probably like ultimately what it looks like. Um, but I think that's probably the most impressive thing. I would love to have a story that's the moral that that's the moral. Um, that would be super interesting. And of course, seeing her making jokes was adorable with that. Um, there was another thing uh, where Tepe pointed out that he said it's impossible to create something that every single person will love. Um, you know, that's such a common sense thing. And, you know, we can talk about things like that. Like, when you think about it, 
already the fact that works are classified into genres and already the fact that works are classified into target markets that just goes to show that there's i feel that genres and target markets are a manifestation of the fact that the, a story can't be perfect for instance if you're reading fantasy you have a different set of expectations than you're reading um a thriller or true crime it's a it's a completely different set of tropes um, if you're reading a shonen, there's a different expectation than if you're reading a shoujo. Um, if you're reading shonen no jump, there's a different expectation than if you're reading some other lesser magazine. Um, when you consider that reality, what you find is, well, you, you'll end up in a situation where if we're already in a situation where we're um, limiting stories into these different streams, what happens when there's someone that doesn't like the concept of the stream itself? You know, what, what do you end up getting there? Um, and now if we go into the other like direction, what do you have to do to make a series that everyone will love? Well, that probably means you have to go so hardcore into your one particular genre that you're able to overcome people who naturally have a bias against the genre itself. But then that speaks like you have to, like how do you even go about creating a series so powerful within its own genre that's able to bring people in? Well, that's the big, that's the big issue there. Um, how would you go about doing that? And ironically, I feel like it's the Shonen Jump series that are probably the better ones at doing this uh, because the Shonen Jump series inadvertently because of the, the formula, I think, and the formula that ultimately brings Time Paradox Ghost Rider down, um, the Shonen Jump series are probably, they're made for mass market appeal. Um, they're the series that can bring people in. We always hear the stories like... Very often when there is a, a big anime blowing up, it's a Shonen Jump series. Very, very rarely do you have other anime blowing up to the degree and the frequency that the Shonen Jump series does. Now, mind you, I'm pretty sure like the series that Katakoa publishes, the light novel company, um, the ones that they publish probably blow up. They probably might have in terms of just in terms of volume, they might have a good amount of light novel adaptations that people have really gravitated towards. Uh, but that's just because they have sheer volume. Uh, but when you go back to Shonen Jump, you know, we have all the, the big ones, all the great. We have Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. We have... We, we, you know what? Let's, if we're going to go Katakoa, we should probably go into Shueisha. Because then that covers more series. But yeah, you have things like Jojo. You have things like Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach. Um, which was really great in, in the West. One Piece is the king in Japan. Um, you know, when you look at that reality... Those are the series that draw people in. Those are usually people's starter series. Um, it's usually sh the Shonen Jump ones, um, which is just a funny observation to have. Now, um, of course, this thing ends with a 10 years later. Honestly, I think we could do without the 10 years later panel uh, because it just shows that Aino's married. Uh, but there is one thing that's really valuable in the 10 years later panel that I found is that Aino has a plan. So if you look at the first part of the chapter, it showed her room that was pretty barren. And then at the end, she has a plant. And that's really good because if she has a plant, that probably means she's taking care of it. Uh, that's probably the best statement that she's well adjusted. So thank God for that. Um, that's really great to know. She's also married. Um, and Tepe does have a ring on him. I'm not going to complain about that. You know, I don't believe Shonen Jump people. Uh, sorry, I don't think mangakas have to get together with other mangaka. I, I don't think that's a pretty limited point of view. Um, but then that's, there is that big conversation about, well, these guys had such a big formative event. We know from the robot, quite literally, that nothing else would save Aino, including therapy. Considering that nothing else saves Aino from her obsessive tendencies, and then you have Tepe doing it, you would think like, well, that's such a big formative event that they would get together. But the lack of the ring on Tepe. Um, I really wonder what the author was thinking with that. Uh, but really showing Aino with... Uh, with a ring might just be a testament to that she's well adjusted at the very least she's figured out work-life balance and honestly like what else can you really like pray for for this poor girl um she's not a poor girl by the end of the series that, that's for sure uh but yeah overall time paradox ghost rider man i think it had a lot of potential i'm um, i'm sad about the plagiarism issues but like once there were parts where it just got ridiculous like I, the one of the worst parts is like every time that the author had to justify that their main character was in the right that that was a weakness uh, because that told me there was a level of insecurity within the author's mind and then you know as things escalate the moment you brought in the robot that was over it, it's done like you you go you go too far to that, that quickly it's a mystery series that doesn't work it was it was out it was it was going down um are there any other things i want to say for time paradox ghost rider 
I think the art was really good. Um, I think it was fun following it week to week. I think it could have improved with detailing more of the manga process. 